everyone, and welcome to another installment of our White Dove Ministries video blog. Uh, it's been a while since I've been able to address you in our blog, and so I'm looking forward to sharing a few things today. Um, I'm speaking to you today right in the midst of Tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about the Feasts of the Lord and uh, Passover, Pentecost, and uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. And most of you that follow our ministry know that we have done a series uh, of all the prophetic implications uh, in the Scriptures dealing with the Feast of Tabernacles. And we know that the Lord Jesus was the fulfillment of all the feasts. We know that. He was the Passover lamb. And, and He came back with the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And so we don't live the observance of the Old Testament rituals of the Feast of the Lord, but we still recognize those dates. Uh, they're called divine appointments. And uh, the Lord has an appointment with our generation, a promised visitation of His parousia presence. And so uh, we're doing our best to position ourselves for that, to contend and believe that there's going to be a manifestation in the, in the imminent days ahead uh, in a profound way beyond anything we've seen in our generation of, of the Lord's presence. And so uh, the idea is that He is going to occupy, tabernacle in, dwell in fullness in a body of people. Pentecost, it says in Ephesians 1, was an earnest, but we're looking for fullness. So anyway, we're right in the midst of that feast right now and um, have a couple of messages that uh, I'd like to share with you that came during both Rosh Hashanah and also uh, the atonement season. Uh, one of which uh, I'm pretty encouraged about. Um, had an experience uh, at atonement where I had, uh, this was a dream, not a vision, but a very vivid, vivid dream. Uh, just before I woke up in the morning, uh, where I was speaking in the dream with a friend of mine, a friend by the name of Neville Johnson. I think most, uh, most of you that follow our ministry are somewhat familiar with Neville, um, a recognized prophet from Australia, a very good friend of ours. But in the dream, he and I were having a conversation which we actually had, uh, that had occurred uh, back in August when uh, we talked on the phone first and, and discussed a visitation that he had. So in my dream, we're re revisiting that conversation where he was telling me that uh, on June 22nd, 2012, uh, he was awakened by the Holy Spirit and told to go to the other end of the house, which he, of course, did. And when he walked from his bedroom to his study, uh, he told me that uh, there standing in his study was the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, that, needless to say, that was a pretty good night. And the Lord began to talk to him about uh, two things. Uh, the coming apostolic reformation and a re-releasing of the spirit and power of Elijah. Something near and dear to our hearts because that's been a core portion of our message for years. Um, in, my, in my experience, in my dream, uh, I was allowed to revisit some experiences that I had myself back in the 90s dealing with the issue of the coming apostolic. I, I know we've had uh, apostolic uh, awakening. And I brought a message in the year 2000 called Apostolic Reformation, dealing with some of the things that we'll see coming forth uh, in the days uh, of the Apostolic Reformation. And it's been wonderful to see men that have paid a great price, you know, to, uh, to forge the way in the last number of years to bring an awareness of both prophetic and apostolic ministries back to the church. But I'm, I'm prophesying we're about to have a new breed of apostles a uh, different kind of apostle that we haven't yet seen in our generation. Maybe they saw a little bit in the last generation, but uh, I'm prophesying there are some people about to have a Damascus Road experience kind of apostles, uh, Mount Sinai visitations kind of apostles, uh, Emmaus Road encounter apostles coming forth that will have an experience. And, uh, and so... In my dream uh, that I had at Atonement, uh, Neville and I were discussing that issue of this coming forth of uh, these apostles and prophets that have the spirit and power of Elijah that will have a genuine anointing and an endowment from heaven to be able to turn the hearts of this young generation uh, back to the faith of our early apostolic fathers, just like the scripture said. We know that many great things happened in the what's called the Voice of Healing revival, the uh, latter rain revival, wonderful things happen. But you know what? God has some unfinished business. We're not over the, we're not over the Jordan just yet. We, we've got to cross over and begin to occupy our promise, and that's precisely what we're beginning to prophesy. So I just want to just give you a few quick notes uh, based on the experience I had back in the 90s and the one I had on atonement. 
of uh, this year where the Lord brought this back into the forefront of our, uh, of our minds where uh, I believe beginning in the fall of 2012 and following, I don't believe it's going to be a one-time deal, but in the seasons ahead, uh, people that have been, uh, men and women that have been uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to groom them and, and sift them and prepare them uh, are about to have an encounter, a real one, a Holy Ghost encounter. Uh, one that will transform them as much as Paul was transformed that day on the road to Damascus where he woke up one morning being the enemy of the church and went to bed that evening its greatest advocate. That's pretty transforming, wouldn't you say? And it says in Acts 22, I like to refer to the one in Acts 22 where he was on his way to Damascus and a bright light shone upon him at noonday and he was stritten, smitten to the ground. Heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Wow, <laughs> what a day. Why you, well, he, you know, found out he was persecuting the very God that he thought he was serving. And, uh, and, and he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, the Nazarene. And he said, go into the city. And of course he did. And, you know, part of this story is a real hero, a man by the name of Ananias, who, uh, you know, apparently had had uh, visitations of his own because, uh, you know, just two verses later over in Acts 9, when Paul tells the story, it says, uh, you know, Paul was smitten to the ground and and uh, he said, who are you, Lord? And two verses later, another man has a, an encounter similar. And he, and he says, here am I, Lord. Quite a different uh, response. But Ananias, you know, obeyed God, even though he may have thought perhaps this guy was going to kill him. He went into the street called Straight and found Saul of Tarsus. And he gave him a fourfold apostolic commissioning. And that's what I want to emphasize, this fourfold commissioning. That's what's about to happen. He said, Saul of Tarsus, the God of our fathers, has called you to know his will. What a novel thing. You know, right now there's so much um, diversity in, in the voices that are coming forth. One is prophesying one thing. Others are prophesying diametrically the opposing things, you know. And somebody needs to stand up with the will of the Lord. Somebody needs to stand up and have the word of the Lord. It was prophesied in the prior generation that apostles would emerge in this last day just before the emergence of the uh, the return of the Lord that would have a true thus saith the Lord message. And it was prophesied that they would have the word of the Lord and know how to appropriate it. I believe that. I believe that there are about to be people that will know the Lord's will, what he wants done, and they're going to prophesy that. But he says, the God of our fathers has called you to know his will, to see the righteous one, to hear utterances from his lips, and to be a testifier of what you have seen and heard. A fourfold apostolic commissioning and mandate. I want to release that. I just want to release it into our, our generation. Those of you that are listening, just say, Lord, commission us. Release our generation uh, so that we can begin to advance your kingdom in ways that we haven't been able to thus far. To know your will. And I want to see the righteous one. I make no bones about it. I, I want to see what John saw. I do. I want to see what he saw when he was caught up uh, while he was on the island of Patmos. I want to see the Lord standing among the seven golden lampstands. I want to see the throne with one sitting upon the throne and the sea of glass and the 24 elders and all those things. I want to see that. I want it to be experiential. I want it to mark my DNA so that everything that comes out of my mouth, everything I breathe, everything I say, every utterance, every step that I take has some influence of that visitation marked in my life and, and the same for you. And then also it says to hear utterances from his lips. Uh, it says in, in the scriptures in Isaiah 30 that we'll hear a word behind us saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. And if ever there was a time that that was necessary and needed, it is now. It is absolutely now. And then it goes on to say, and then you'll be a testifier or a witness of all that you have seen and heard. An experiential testimony. You know, apostolic ministry according to that standard is just simply seeing something, hearing something, and testifying of what you have seen and heard. I can do that. I can do that. You know what? That doesn't take a theological degree. That doesn't make me have to have a doctorate of, in some seminary. I can do that. I can walk with God and hear His voice and, and hear the revelation of the Scriptures coming forth and expounding by the Holy Spirit and then just simply stand before the people and share in a very simple and, and um, in a non-hyped way the revelation of Jesus Christ the apocalypse, the unveiling of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I just pray, you know, that, uh, that you can grasp that revelation, 
There was much more that came in atonement. I saw, I was revisited, I revisited Revelation where I saw a brown eagle that followed, was followed by a white dove that was followed by a white eagle. And I knew that to be a message that was brought in the Voice of Healing Revival that was preparing a dove company who will then prepare the, the bride of Christ for her last day ministry. I've got an article and Steve Shelley will have one also in this month's newsletter. I would encourage you to get it. have no time to go into that now. Uh, but that's all part of the same thing concerning these apostles and prophets that are about to emerge today, that God himself is going to visit in profound ways. So I just hope I have provoked you in some way uh, to position yourself for visitation, uh, to position yourself to see something and to hear something and then testify of what you've seen and heard. So Lord, release that blessing to the people you have prepared. Lord, we just call forth those astounding apostles and prophets that you're going to use profoundly in this hour. We pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <music>